How you been? Great. Yeah? Busy. Yeah? A good busy? Amazing busy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing busy. It's yeah. been good. It's been productive, man. Uh, you know, it's, I was thinking about we were talking about with our wives. Do you remember the first time we met? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember the first time. <laughs> Yeah. And what's funny about that is, you know, people introduce, you know, oh, you should meet this person. Oh, yeah. Should. But the, per the, the mutual friend who said it, I was like, okay, let me see. Because if he said it, yeah. I'm, what did you think the first time he was like, y'all y'all, should hang? You know, I, you know, definitely always trusting the opinion. So I was like, all right, you know, <laughs> that was such a funky, funky day. Cause it was like a travel day. <laughs> I was like, the, in the ultimate chill. Like, okay, he's like, all right, let me, you know what I mean? So it wasn't. I love the, the space because it was no like, it wasn't anything expected. It was such a, like a comfortable vibe that I was able to like connect with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Connect with yeah. your wife, you know what I mean? Connect with Natalie and, 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 and that was cool. Yeah. Because you were able to really see what people are all about without like the kind of the expectations yep. and all that fun stuff. Yeah. That was, you know. Which is really how you want to meet somebody, you know. Oh, what, yeah. And it was funny after that, I don't think I saw you again until all-star all-star in charlotte and we were randomly walking down the yep. same street yeah and yep. i was like look yep. at this six yeah and that's and yep. we saw each other a few random times yep. after that yeah that's how you know it's like it's meant to be that's what I was that was a super too. random street it wasn't even like the main street no. town. it was like off the beaten path you know I and like, that's why yeah. i was like that's amir yeah and we just we just met so yeah man yep. man i appreciate you coming out of course of and, course and, thank you for having me you know these these conversations, really, I just, what I really thought about was people that are accomplishing and doing things, um, I want to connect. I, I think we connect more. That's great to look at, right? But when you hear a deeper sense of who they are, yeah. what they've been through, I really think people can learn, you know, from that. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So tell me, man, what, what season, I know you talk about being busy, but what season of life, what does busy look like? Um, man, it's, it's, it's literally building. You know yeah. what I mean? Building and, and, and what they would say is manifesting. You know what okay. I'm saying? So it's, it's kind of in that in that space now. After, you know, coming into film mm -hmm. and now it's really establishing myself in this space. Mm -hmm. um, a ton of learning, you know what I mean? Um, a ton of connecting. And then it's just really utilizing what I do naturally to be able to bring the right projects to life. And have you always, did you always know which, were you always able to connect what you do naturally in everything you did? Did you know that was gonna be the thing that? I didn't know it at all yeah. because I didn't know that it was like a skill set. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when you're in, like my journey, I went from, you know, basketball to the bank. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in banking church. I was in the church heavy and I was working at Wells Fargo. I would have never, when you say church heavy. Oh, heavy. And what, what does that mean? Like, I'll, I'll put it to you like this. Like okay. for, for 10 years, I did not listen to secular music. Wow. So like, so I, like I, I, I'm telling you the truth. Like okay. there's a whole section that, that like of, of pop music that I didn't get. So like, like Lil Wayne, like I left Lil Wayne when he was like, kind of like a hot boy, you uh -huh. know what I'm saying? And then like, there was like the Carter and all that stuff. Like I was like, and then I kind of came back to like listening to secular, secular music. <laughs> I'm like, yo, when did Lil Wayne become so popular? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like, I, don't, I, I miss that. T-Pain, wow. miss yeah. T-Pain, all That's that. It was a 10 year stretch of music from like 2002 to 2012, where I was like, wow. yo, I was so, you know, into, you know, my, my church family and stuff uh -huh. like that. I was like, yo, let me, be, let me get so focused on this. I was focused on the church. I was up there, you know, I was, you know, classes, working with the youth and doing a, a bunch of amazing things. Mm -hmm. And I was working and that's all I was focused on. Church, work, church, work. Yeah. And so, um, wow. but like, that was kind of like my trajectory. So I went from like, you know, I went from working at the bank and church to then, you know, moving to New York and going into sports. And, you know, then it was like this piece of really being in relationships, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Relationship management when I worked at Nike um jordan brand more specifically and so it was like at that point it was a very loose skill set it's not really measurable yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. but it was like all right then you leave you know you leave jordan brand it's like okay well what do i now do with this because i'm not an accountant you know what i'm saying i'm okay. not a lawyer i'm not you know what i mean i'm yeah. not all these I, I'm, I, I literally worked for which can be a scary place it, oh, super what, scary. what do i do with this super scary yeah and then you know you kind of find out you know to kind of like come back to your question 
that, you know, all right, there actually is value in being able to bring people together and bring community communities together and be able to leverage those relationships to create amazing things. Yeah. Um, and then I got into film on accident and then I was like, oh, they call this producing. So I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm a producer. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, you know, that, that's, that's, that's kind of, you know, how it almost kind of came to be from a very like super duper high level. I want to go, I, this is the first time you've ever told me you were, was that a conscious decision to not listen to something secular? Oh yeah. That came from what you believed at, at that time? For sure. For sure, like, you know, at, I mean, and I think that, that at, at that time, you know what I mean, at that time it was what was right for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because I, you know, I was able to commit, dedicate, and really it helped to set the path for my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. where the direction that I was going. And to be honest with you, like it removed a lot of distractions. Yeah. So like I wasn't in, you know, I wasn't partying in the clubs, nothing wrong with it, you know what I'm saying? It yeah. just, I just wasn't doing it. Yeah. I wasn't in the streets, you know what I'm saying? I was literally school, work, church. Once I was done with school, it was work and church. And, and that allowed me to be like hyper-focused on my career. Yeah. Hyper-focused on my relationship with God, hyper-focused on like really trying to be a better person. Yep. Um, but that was like, that was my journey, you know what I'm saying? And I want to come back to that relationship and how that that fuels everything that you're doing now. Mm -hmm. We both played basketball yeah. at a young age, uh, both from cities where basketball can quickly become an identity. Was that ever yeah. an issue for you as far as basketball and then whenever it ended? Or did you have the vision to take it all the way to the top or did you have to deal with some of that? Yeah, I mean, for sure. Every every kid that, that grows up playing basketball at a high level or with high level people, it's probably a better yep. way to say it. Yep. Um, like your goal is to play professionally. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If you got a kid that's like, ah, he's, he's 14, 15 years old and says, I don't, don't want to go to NBA, he's not really competing, you know, right. not for real, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Or at least yeah. play overseas. Yeah. Um, you know, but it was probably when I got to like my senior year in high school, um, that I was like, ah, you know, maybe I'm not going to get paid to play. Maybe I could play overseas. And, you know, maybe I need to be able to take a long-term view on life. Mm -hmm. Um, to see kind of what it is that I want to do, you know what I mean? And so it, it was like at that time, I was like, all right, what happens after school? You know, the funny thing is growing, like growing up, we used to have these things called reps. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, our team, when I went to Dominguez, we had reps, which is like, a, you know, that's thing to do from Nike to basically usher your team through and make sure you get all your gear and all your shoes and mm -hmm. whatever. And I was like, yo, I want to do that when I get older. You know, so when wow. I get done playing basketball, I want to be a rep. You know what I'm saying? That was like my, that was like my, my dream. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and so, you know, to be able to actually realize that dream, you know, not ever playing. I played two years in college. After that, it was a rap. Mm -hmm. But then still being able to kind of realize that dream at 28 at the time. It was yeah. like, you know what I mean? It was kind of almost, you know, purposed. It sounds like, because it sounds like I was so bad that I was, there was nothing after. Yeah at least playing overseas. Yeah. Right? Once I get yeah. seven years of that. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. But it sounds like you were better at going, of having that uh, introspective conversation of, okay, it's probably going to stop here. Was, was there any pain in that, having to stop? Mm. No. Yeah. Because, I mean, basketball, basketball wasn't, uh, like, fun for me. At, okay. After a while, it, it became not fun. Yeah. And so, you know, I mean, I was just, you know, I just look back, I don't even know what it was that made me like think like that. Um, so it was like, all right, I played my first year in college. My first year sucked, um, just from experience perspective. My second year, I had the most fun I ever had playing basketball at JC. Um, and then after that, it was just like, all right, do I go ahead and chase these D2, D3 scholarships or do yeah. I make like a real life decision? And by that time I started going to church. And so I started surrounding myself with other like young professionals and like older professionals I started to see what was possible, specifically for like a young black professional, you know what I'm saying? And knowing that there's there's something beyond this and there's possibility beyond this. And that surrounding myself with those people, like that was able, that, that kind of gave me an opportunity to be able to like, okay, there is hope yeah. beyond being a high school coach or beyond, you know what I'm saying? Whatever that is, it's nothing wrong with that, but I didn't see that as my path. Yeah. Um, but when I was around those young professionals, I was like, yo, you know, there, there's, there's possibility here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Speaking of possibilities, you saw possibilities. Yeah. I want to read to give more context to who I'm, I'm sitting across from. So 
uh, you were in Nike, Nike Athlete Sports Marketing. Uh, you got to work on NBA All-Star Activations, MLB All-Star Activations, Jordan Brand Classic Games, Athlete Signature Shoe Launches, Flagship Retail Door Launches, NBA Africa Games, Global Brand initi Initiatives in China and Europe. If that wasn't enough, you were, you were VP of Special Projects over at SLAM, notably bringing together the Donda Academy cover and the BLM Special Edition. And if that wasn't enough, you then transitioned into film where you EP'd the film Two Distant Strangers that won an Oscar last year. When I read that, what do you hear? Does that signal to you success? And if it does, like where does that land on your holistic view of success? Yeah. Um, no, nah, it doesn't. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't. It should, but you know, it doesn't. Um, I look at it as like a, like a, a journey. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? As as, as blessings. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and for me, it's just you know, I'm just grateful to have those opportunities. Like when I look back at it now, at you know, and the things that have happened. You know, sometimes you get so caught up in working. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. It's like okay, we got to work. You have to execute at a high level. You have to be able to do a great job. Um, because for me, like I would I would look at those those big like moments that will come and like the execution and doing things differently as you know job security mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and not as legacy building mm. um you know and that's kind of been like the, the 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 take that i've had on it up until now where it's really switching to legacy building and i think that that's when you know i think it's all a part of it because it's all a part of your journey right. but like my my mindset is now switching to being able to build community, being able to help the people that's coming before me, you know yeah. what I mean? Help the people around me, being able to help my family yeah. and being able to leave, you know, something something bigger than myself. Yeah. Um, I think when I think of those things, I think, oh, that's dope. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They're like great memories. Um, but you know, what, 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 say what you do for God will last or what you do for the kingdom will last, you know what I'm saying? I think now it's, it's about doing bigger things mm -hmm. that are gonna be bigger than myself. Yeah. Um, and that, 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 as I built that and as I, I bring that to life, then then that's success yeah. to me. Yeah. yeah. You know, as you were talking about, we get so inundated with trying to get to a certain place, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a sacrifice and a cost. And usually that sacrifice and cost is silent. You know, mm -hmm. you keep it internal, you tell somebody closest to you. Mm -hmm. What is that sacrifice to be able to do what you've done? Including, yes, those are achievements. Yeah. What does that cost for you? Uh, for me, for me specifically, it was like peace. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, like, like it cost you peace? Yeah, to, yeah, yeah okay. it cost me my peace. Okay. During that time, because it was how I looked at it. Mm -hmm. You know what mm. I mean? It was like, you know, I'm, I, I wasn't doing it out of, I shouldn't say doing it, but when, when I was working, my work was not out of, yo, I want to build for this and this and this. A lot of my work was out of fear. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? So like, my fear of failure, mm -hmm. you know, my fear that somebody gonna come and, you know, come and clip me, my fear that somebody that, that I'm gonna go back to the hood, you know what I'm saying? I'm a couple of paychecks away, I'm from South Central, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm a couple yeah. of paychecks away from being back in the hood. I don't wanna go back there, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. so, you know, being from where I'm coming from, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like, and not wanting to go back, that's what drove me to be the best that I could be, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that cost me my peace. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, I was able to then go and, you know, do good at jobs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but it was a lot of like sleepless nights. It was a lot of worry. It was a lot of anger. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It was a lot of animosity because I felt like every time I messed up, you know what I'm saying? Or every time somebody messed something up or every time whatever mm -hmm. like that, as opposed to like, you know, it just is what it is. It was like, yo, this is one step closer to me failing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and and under no, you know, stretch of the imagination can I ever fail. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I had to like, you know, not up until really recently, like in the last like two, three years, you know, and I'm still in the middle of like breaking that, you know, breaking that thought process and that mindset, you know, am I just now starting to like see it differently? You yeah. know what I'm saying? What do you, how do you see it? What's that switch and how you see it now? Um, I think because I think now it's about building. You know what I mean? It's about building. It's about uh, 
understanding other people's perspectives, other people's, you know, standings. Yeah. Um, you know, understanding that not everybody has the same ambitions, but their ambitions are just as important to them. And, you know, they're a part, they're on their journey, just like you're on your journey. Yeah, love that. Um, you know, and then also, you know, you switch to like legacy building, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and switching to community building. And, and that now is how I'm looking to be able to drive my success. Yeah. You know, like I'm not, I'm not necessarily driven by, you know, money. Like I, I like, I, I want to continue to grow financially and do great things. Um, but that's not enough for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, you know, I've seen, I've seen what money does, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and for me, like uh, the, the ugly sides of money ain't really worth it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. but what is worth it is building something that I can look back on and say, yo, this is, you know, this is, this was worth it. You know, it's funny. Cause I, I think we are, we are finally getting to a point where it's not about just having success, right? Because mm -hmm. to your point, I've seen that same thing. And it's not, I don't think either one of us are saying we don't want success or, or the money, but if it robs you of purpose or if it robs you of the peace when you have it, I, I, then what is the point, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, speaking of that, I, the things I read, the legacy building you're talking about, before any of that really played a big part in your thinking, success-wise, is success, I would say you're successful, not just because of the accomplishments, but everything you're talking about right now, mindset shift. People don't realize how successful you are mm -hmm. once your mind yeah. shifts to what you're talking about. Is success what you thought it would be? I'll let you know when I become successful. <laughs>